today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I've been with Cameron for 11 years. Our marriage is on the outs, and I'm trying to give one last chance to save it. Erin's created all of these problems to take the focus off of her. She's ruined my friendships and my life, pretty much. He has a family, and he needs to be a married man and act like it. I believe that I've been there for Erin emotionally throughout our entire relationship and tried my best to support her. Cameron thinks I should be okay with his friendship because he says he's not doing anything wrong, that she's just a friend. But there's obviously more to that because your friendship means more than your marriage. Erin is so jealous of Lily because she feels that she is prettier than her and that I am closer to her and we have more in common. She shouldn't be jealous. I feel like I'm not a priority in Cameron's life because he's selfish. If there was anything that could save this marriage, it would be a lot of change on Aaron's part. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Cameron Adams and Aaron Adams. The two of you have been together for 11 years, married for six, and have two children together, but do not want to be married anymore. Mr. Adams, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your situation and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, Judge, um, I'm here today because we have been together for 11 years, mm -hmm. and up until about a few years ago, um, I would say we had the perfect relationship. Everybody thought we were mm -hmm. the best relationship. We got along just fine and didn't have any issues. Um, it started probably when she would st go back home to Oklahoma, where mm -hmm. we're from, I guess you could say, and I found out that she was looking up her ex. So, like, I was using her phone one day because mine was broke, mm -hmm. and I, in the search history, I seen her ex's name and that she was searching, searching him. So I questioned her about it, and I said, um, you know, you're looking up your ex, what's this all about? And she denied it and said she wasn't. So I then showed her in her phone, I'm like, yes, you were, here it mm -hmm. is, right here. Yeah. And she got mad, angry, started flipping out on me and just yelling at me, and it caused a lot of problems. Um, another time that she went back um, was for her grandmother's funeral. Mm -hmm. And she came back, and shortly after, um, she was pregnant. Now, as far as I knew at the time, she was on birth control. She always mm -hmm. had always been on birth control. And so mm -hmm. the timing of it was kind of weird to me for her going back there. So it didn't make any sense to me. So I'm asking her about that, and um, you can explain this to me. And she was getting mad and angry and flipping out about that, too, to where it started turning into being about me, and uh, she, I'm getting accused now, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, what am I doing? And we can't even discuss anything about her. Right. So it ended up turning out to where I have a, a coworker that I was friends with at many different jobs, and she knew this person, which his name mm -hmm. is Lily, um, that we had hung out together. Um, she actually won these tickets to the fair off the radio station. Okay. She wasn't able to go. Before we get there, I want to talk about that, I do. Okay. Well, I'm gonna find out what's happening in Oklahoma first. <laughs> Ms. Adams, what's happening in Oklahoma? Um, nothing was happening in Oklahoma. I was shooting the breeze with my friends, my girlfriends back home, and of course, well, I'm from a very small town, like a graduating class of like 76. So mm -hmm. when most of us grew up together. Right. Well, um, one of my exes, like, I, um, I had looked him up because we had been talking about him. And so I'm like, oh, I wonder, you know, what he's doing these days and this and that. It was complete instant. I'm not in love with him. I, I really, I don't know why I did it, because I really don't even care that much. I was just being just curious. Just wondering, what happened to him? Yeah, because we got into talking about past stuff. Mm -hmm. And the timing of my pregnancy is not even the time that I went to Oklahoma. That doesn't even add up. That shows how much partying he does. Mr. Adams, let me ask you this. Of the things that you saw between her and her ex in Oklahoma or about her ex in Oklahoma, were any of them suspect or were they just, I wonder what he's up to? It was suspect in the fact that she lied about it and denied it that it ever even happened. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if that was the case, why Did lie? Did you lie about it? I didn't lie about it. He, he woke me up one night and said, so why were you looking up your ex? And I'm like, what out of dead sleep? What? What are you talking about? And he was like, why'd you look up your ex? Why'd you look him up? And I'm like, uh, because you said I you was didn't. curious. No, I never said that you I said didn't. You said you didn't. That's why I showed you the phone. I said, here, yes, you did. Here it is right here. OK, I got you. I got you. Let me, so I want to go back to the pregnancy. You believed that she was on birth control. Right. And she got pregnant. So that, that weirded you out a bit, because you didn't know how that happened. Correct. OK. What is, what is your take on that pregnancy thing? When I 
stop taking my birth control because my insurance lapsed. I told him. He sits there and says that I didn't tell him, but I have told him this. So, so he's telling me I looked at my ex and then I got pregnant it, three months later? It, it was an Mr. Adams, didn't tell me. did you not no, know she not had gotten off birth control? No, I did not. Did I, I did not. In fact, even, even later on after that, even in her phone, again, there's a message that she sent talking about I wasn't taking my birth control and big bold letters do not tell that in it. Um, Don't tell I, our business, I would just not you. I would you just already do. I, I even have it right here. I have Let it. Me I see mean, it's, it. it's it's a little blurry. You can't mm -hmm. really see it because my phone was messed up at the time. But you can see exactly what she says. Ms. I mean, Adams, were you talking about your your birth control situation? Uh, yeah, because it wasn't planned. This pregnancy just like happened. I was upset about it. He was upset about it. He had known the situation. When I say don't tell, I'm not talking about my husband. Right. Don't I didn't tell. Know. I'm the talking about my public. coworkers <laughs> right. and everybody else because we are a very, very small place. And when th things get said, the whole place knows. I didn't know. You did know because I told you. Okay. I'm going to ask you something. And just something you might want to saute on. My husband says to me, you didn't tell me a lot when I know I did because I know he isn't listening. He ain't mad about it because I talk a lot. Sometimes he tunes me out, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. You know, he gets tired of it. Is there a possibility that you get told stuff, but you're really not paying attention? No, because later on, I'll bring up those same facts to show her that I did listen, and I'll say a subject, and she'll say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, constantly. Maybe he was drinking constantly. too much. Oh, yeah, you can say that all you want. And, and even, even more so, even beyond that, it became a, all this became a problem, um, when I brought it up, that she turned it all around on me, and it was like, "Oh, you, you're with Lily. You want to be with Lily, yeah. and you, you know, like, we couldn't even discuss well, this whole situation before." I want to resolve the thing with the baby. You're clear now, though. That baby is yours, correct? Yes. Since there was no issue of paternity there. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do that. I mean, I mean, I. He made me feel like the kids. whole time I was pregnant. I love my kids, and I, when I, my kids and my kids. I see them, and I lo look at them, and I love them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got, I, I think I see what's going on here. But now that we've talked about all that, I want to talk about the person you brought up twice, Lily. Yeah. She has a problem with Lily. Lily is your best friend. We're going to figure out just what kind of friend she is and why you have a problem with how tight they are. Nothing was really said, and then maybe a few days before it was time for him to go, Lily was going with him, and Lily was going to be his ride down there. And they were staying the night at his friend's house. So, Mr. Adams, I'm just going to ask you, who is Lily, and why has she become an issue in your relationship? Um, Lily is one of my really good friends. Um, we've been co-workers at multiple jobs throughout the years. Um, I only believe she became an issue, which was years later, because I found out all these things about her. And when I brought up all these things, it just got turned around on me to where, oh, you're messing with Lily or you love Lily and you're with Lily, when she was just a co-worker. Yeah. She's a good, really, a, a good friend of mine. When you say all these things, you're just talking about her looking up seeing what the ex-boyfriend was doing, right? And, and lying about everything that and I bring up and, and having the proof that she's lying and then it's, it's always, oh, I forgot. Yeah. Or, oh, the story changes is magically. It, and is that it? Not necessarily. I mean, You she, say all these things like it was an ongoing, you know, uh, sequential issue. But it, it seems like this one thing that you're just... Rotating well, I mean, that, that's what really started me not not trusting her and, or questioning the things that she was doing from that point on. Because I mean, I'm, if I had proof that she was saying different things than was what was really happening, it just basically made me not feel like anything she was saying was the truth. And then she starts turning the tables around on me to where we couldn't even discuss those things anymore. So it became li Lily was the biggest issue in the world after that. Why don't you tell me what your issue with Lily is? He would hang out with her all the time, and he's sitting here accusing me of some things that I've done mm. when I didn't really do anything. Right. But yeah, you're gonna go hang out with this girl when I don't even know when you're when hanging you out. When you say with her? hang out, give me give me some stories or parameters what made you feel uncomfortable. So he told me he was gonna go to Phoenix for his birthday, and so to hang out with one of his friends. I'm like, okay, cool. So I kind of felt like I wasn't invited. That's fine. You're hanging out with the guys, whatever. So then, in the meantime, we went, I won these tickets off the radio, and there's three tickets. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe I'll get to go. And so nothing was really said. And then maybe a few days before it was time for him to go, Lily was going with him, and Lily was going to be his ride down there. And they were staying the night at his friend's house. I was uncomfortable with that, but I was trying to stay cool and calm because it's not usually like me, but I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like her from the get-go. When I met her, I'm like, 
I just had a you feeling. You didn't like it because that's a lie. Yeah. Don't you think it doesn't appear correct that you got mad because she just looked up an ex, but you're taking off with another woman out of town in a car, spending the night? Don't you think that's more suspect than just figure, seeing, hey, what an ex was up to these days? Well, just let me explain that situation because, it, uh, like, again, like I have the problem with, that is a complete lie. When she won the tickets off the radio, it was maybe three or four weeks before we even go down there, I made a Facebook post saying, wife of the year has won me these tickets. I'm taking Lily and my other friend to the fair. So how could you possibly not know until two days before that we were going if I made a post, Lily and her commented on the post. Mm -hmm. Show you right here. Okay. So she won you tickets, but you weren't, she wasn't gonna go with you? <laughs> no, she, she yeah. wasn't able to go. Oh, I wasn't able to go because I was, I was, I was, I was she, invited. I thought you didn't know. See, I wasn't, I'm saying, I another, wasn't another lie. I just told exactly. you that I knew about the tickets. I won them. All right. Well, uh, since uh, Lily seems to be a big issue, I think we ought to meet Lily. Lily Pfeiffer? Yep. How are you, Ms. Lily? I'm wonderful. How are oh, you? Oh, good, good. We want to talk to you momentarily about the <laughs> nature of your relationship with Mr. Adams and why Mrs. Adams doesn't like you. Oh, yeah. Every single thing that I have. Right. You've seen it. So let me see your phone. He didn't really want to give it to me. I'm like, okay, well, finally he does. So I take it and I go out to the car because I'm going to search through it. And um, I drove off. And I drove off. Then he factory reset his phone. Would you be concerned if your husband's best friend was a younger woman? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So, Ms. Pfeiffer, I want to talk to you momentarily. You are a co-worker of Mr. Adams. And friend, why don't you tell me what you see in this relationship and your relationship to Mr. Adams? Okay, um, well, I met Karen, um, I think, four or five years ago, um, and it was right around our birthdays. We found out we had the same birthday. So, from my understanding, we were, like, kind of talking about, okay, maybe we'll celebrate together. Why not? Um, and then a, a couple days later, he told me his wife had won tickets on, on the radio for the State Fair in Phoenix. Um, and we were both working that night on our birthday, and I did have the car. So we drove down there. We didn't get there till like midnight, probably. Um, went to the fair, came back the next day. We had a great time with his friend that I had just met. Um, came back that night, and we even all three hung out like perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I thought everything was fine, you know? I thought that her yeah. and I had when, when did you first figure out there was a problem, or did you? Um, years later, um, I had moved away to Colorado. So I came back and, you know, he had kind of told me a little bit what was going on, but not really. He just told me that she didn't like us hanging out because she, yeah. I've always um, had an issue. My problem is, is I didn't speak up. I didn't speak up until I started getting accused of this, 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 and this, and this. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, really? Because you're hanging out with this girl. You went somewhere with this girl overnight, and now she's back in your life, and you're hanging out all the time. You're never home. You're partying all the time. Well, I'm stuck at home with the kids. And on top of this, this was posted on social media. Let me see. And it does not look like, oh, you're just my friend kind of picture. We weren't together. It didn't matter. And yeah, we were together. We're married. If you kick me out of the house, we're no, married. we're not together, okay. no. Hey, 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 don't no. Argue, don't argue, don't argue. We're married, Adams. So now you are more than friends. Is that accurate? No, thing? not at all. Not at all. Oh, not the at picture's all. fine because we weren't together. So it's fine for you to look like more than friends. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. perspective. At, the, at this point, I didn't care. Because like I said, you put me out of the house and kicked at me the, out, uh, said uh, you uh, didn't uh, want to uh, be uh, with me. I mean. So after he took her to the fair, though, was there a continuing contact? Because my understanding is she moved away. She did. Um, I didn't think, like, I didn't think too much of it, kind of let go over it or whatever. And um, we had been fighting about everything, like cleanliness and him being gone. And, like, there's this, like, time where it was, like, Nothing this but arguing. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I seen that she was back around because he was telling me I'm such a liar, I'm such a liar. And I'm like, well, let me see your phone because you've seen my Facebook messages, my iCloud. Every single thing that I have. Right. You've seen it. So let me see your phone. He didn't really want to give it to me. I'm like, okay, well, finally he does. So I take it and I go out to the car because I'm going to search through it. And um, you I drove off. And I drove off. 
Then he factory reset his phone. Your one last complaint is you say he used to be a great dad until he started partying. Can you, can you briefly tell me what's occurring in that regard? He stopped hanging out with the kids. He used to like game with them and play with them and like do stuff with them and he stopped. He stopped being around at all. Mr. Adams, do you want to uh, respond to that? I do interact with my kids. I've bought us guitars, um, any board games that we have, I've bought. The little pie in the face game where you slap yourself with whipped cream, I bought all that. The fact I, that I do you bought them is not the issue, whether or not you bought them. Her, her concern is that you're not with them. I was playing. doing those things with them. She doesn't. She would <laughs> be but do you, Did you stop, though? I only stopped in the sense of our interactions and us fighting to where I wasn't around so much. Yeah, okay. I got a poem from Ms. Pfeiffer to you. I'm gonna try to, I've read it, and I wanna figure out what it means. What would you do if your partner hated your best friend? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I want to show Miss uh, Pfeiffer that poem. Is that a poem you wrote? Um, probably. I, I write a lot. Did you write it to Mr. Adams? Yeah, I did. It sounds like a love letter to me. It Am is. Am I wrong? You know, well, it is in a way. This was a time when they were separated. They mm -hmm. had been separated for a while, my understanding anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and I was drunk and I wrote him a love letter and I gave it to him. He's my friend. And I, I, I didn't mean it in a way that I'm in love with him. I know that looks, it, it said sounds in like love. Said, oh, You're well, mine I know, and in love. Like That's what that bullshit. said. Yes, I know, I know. But it was more of like, I was just writing him a poem. You know what I mean? I didn't, it sounds like BS, He kept but... it in his wallet. <laughs> yeah. I, I got it. Now, Ms. Pfeiffer, I'm gonna, this. stop, 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 stop. Put the poem down. Please have a seat. Thank you so much for coming. I do appreciate <laughs> that. I really do. Now, I'm gonna tell you, number one, I'm glad y'all getting a divorce, because this thing is over. <laughs> number two is, Mr. Adams, let me tell you where I think you went wrong, and let me tell you, Ms. Adams, where I think you went wrong. I think you got stuck on that little hiccup about looking up the ex. And that changed your entire perspective of what was going on in the relationship. You put on those purple jealousy glasses and everything you saw from that point forward, whether it was rational or not, was further, further, uh, was a further indication of her unfaithfulness. And that's a fear response that you had that infected the entire relationship. That's all I'm gonna say. Ms. Adams, walk on, walk well. You did your best you could. I saw that letter you wrote to him, and it was a letter that, that I thought was very extraordinary and one that I would share with any young woman. And it said in it, and I underlined it because I loved it, I'm sure you haven't noticed, but there is a reason why I stopped nagging about phone and gaze games because I am happy being me and happy in my space. If you're in a relationship with a guy who was blowing dark in your direction all of the time because of whatever happening in his head, because it's in his insecurities, you can't get overwhelmed by it. And you were overwhelmed by it. And then you decided, I'm going to find my happy because he's not going to be able to give it to me. Because you became a bad thing in his life. You became a cheater even though you weren't one, and you decided to step on and move on and be happy in and of yourself. And I really respect that. I don't think you're a bad guy, Mr. Adams. I really don't. But I think that, that you're a frightened guy and not a secure guy, and that you won't be a right guy for any woman until you handle all of that. I wish all three of you the best. This matter is adjourned. I guess knowing it from her, even though she tried to try to say that it wasn't like that. There's no other way it could be. The, the, the letter was, it's, it is what it is. And it just hurts me. Now that I'm going to be single, I'm not going to pursue a relationship with anybody. I'm going to work on myself and make myself a better person so that my kids will be taken care of and seen in the light that I did for them uh, where I've been portrayed as not doing for them, it won't be any question. <laughs>